We were going to do rear arrow on the spec truck for since the beginning. Uh, it's a huge vital part of aerodynamics for a vehicle, uh, especially what style vehicle we're doing. I did two sheets and then we came up, you know, sheet one, example D. This one was the most dynamic. And there was, you know, I kind of like put this on my story too. And I, I didn't listen to what the people said, but it was interesting to hear their input on this. And really I followed what Ben Walker pressed on the most and it still ended up being D. It was very interesting that D, D was what everybody liked. Um, that concept, and keep in mind that's just a concept, it's just like enough to get the idea right. That's what everybody liked, and then that's also what was the most sought after and recommended for Ben. So we took that um, and then we applied proper functional design into this thing and made it work on the chassis, uh, and that's what we have over here. Happy Monday, by the way. This is the spec truck update. Um, this is Kevin Betancourt's car. This is our first race car. Um, I call this the aero spec truck. This thing, uh, we've done some updates, but then we got into this bout of this thing where just working on it nonstop, hardcore, um, and getting stuff banged on. And there's so much stuff. I don't have a list for you guys on this. We're just gonna go over what's here because it's a lot of different layers. Uh, we'll catch up another time. I want you to all see it with just the aluminum, all the skin on it. Uh, so we'll do that the next following update. And then the following one after that is going to be this thing outside. And it's going to be very potent because um, it, we've put serious thought and forethought into the aerodynamics. And that's what I was getting at here. Um, this, you know, when you have a small studio, you guys always ask, do a tour, do a tour, do a tour. I don't, I like to showcase each vehicle for what it is. And, and that's the, the name of the game for like each one of our episodes is to just, uh, I like to showcase each vehicle in its own spotlight. And, and that's more wholesome to me. Uh, if there's a point where I'd like to show the whole facility, uh, maybe we'll do that, but it might also be at another facility. So you'll have to see. Uh, this, that vantage point over there, that's, that was my tangent, is when you're working in small spaces, um, it's very important that you are able to stand back a certain distance and look at what you're doing. If I'm just working on this thing, you know, here or even a foot away from here where it's, it's four to five feet away, I will not understand these shapes. And to get big compound shapes like this, uh, where they, they draw off the same angle and then they flow back and they, they pull back here, I have to see that from about your distance. Um, and, and that's the only way to really get a grasp on it without shoving this thing outside on and off. Um, I know we got good shapes from there and I just, I can feel that, that we have the flow here. Um, this has most of its aero kit on here. Uh, every single shape and surface is specifically to either allow air to flow, to catch air or to direct air. Um, it is completely functional. Um, even like the, the fans on the top, that is all like diffusers. It reminds me, I don't know if you've ever seen Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, the, like the OG uh, movie. It was really good. And I still think it's not, it doesn't look that bad to me, but there's Master Shredder and he's got this like, <laughs> it looks like a, like a, it's like a half of a Nerf helmet, but it has like these blades on it. There is a vibe there. And I, and I, I feel like that's something it's interesting because things stick with you when you're a kid. And then you like, you don't even know that you're replicating or like you're doing something that's similar design direction to that because it's all been imprinted in you. Um, and that's, I got a lot of that with like firewall stuff and tin work on trucks, but that I think did a subconscious rub off on me. But right now this is like, I'm going to do the best I can on this update of just stuff to point out to you guys. Um, and it's not as thought out or it's not as notepad as usual. 
but we've gotten so much done. I want to say this truck is 95% right now. Uh, it's going to leave in a few weeks and it's, it's a really impressive looking piece of machinery here. Um, uh, the, the thought here with the spec truck and, and I'm going to back this thing up is, uh, you know, when you have a spec class, you're limited. And, and so with these trucks, they're limited by, by engine and drivetrain. Um, and they still like, they, they have some unlimited chassis, uh, options that are still there. Like your, I think your wheel travel is still unlimited. I think your tire size has to be a 40 or under. Um, but you know, especially that engine. And so you're stuck trying to figure out how can you make this thing handle better? How can you make it go faster? How can you make it have more top speed? How can you make it be more stable at all the different speeds? How can you make it not have so much oversteer? Where, where do you do that? And the way that you do that is you apply aerodynamics to these things. Uh, and nobody's really doing that to an extent. Like, oh, I'm putting a valence on, cool, got the aerodynamics. Neat, that's, like, that's about it. Um, and I think that this next step like, is really trying to figure out what the next, where can you raise the bar to where this thing will, will outhandle another vehicle that's a spec vehicle that's competitive in the same class. And that's where we're at. First things first, um, that is a Starlink mount. So there is a big heavy duty flush mount Starlink that goes in here. Um, part of the packaging in the rear is to have open space. So this is not a complete sealed canopy. And I hope that you guys can kind of see this stuff as I'm going. I'll do some careful footwork on here. There you go. So right where I'm at, is uh, right about your B-pillar tube and you can kind of see the chassis in here. And this is all like, this is supported so we can stand here. And I also built a substructure in here. Um, you can kind of see where an X would be and it's running right on this crease where the buttons are. So it'd run all the way through here. There's a big X structure in here. So what you can actually do is you can stand um, all here and you know if when Kevin gets this thing done I'd probably put some grip tape in the areas where you can make contact just as an indicator and then you can kind of crawl up from the back and you can crawl down into here to access the coolers and things and that's that's part of what we wanted here is not to have this closed canopy but to have this extra air being extracted that the air is going to be coming from the front here um, and it's going to go you know over all of the hood area and it's going to go through the the driver and co-driver area it's going to cool the coolers that are here and then all the cooler fans are going to extract the air and pull it through and then they're going to vent up through here and it's going to be directed here so it's not going to just hit a wall back here um, some of this other stuff like this is also extraction and part of the reason you want these extraction holes is there's certain i don't know if you'd call them tiers but there's there's certain um speeds which air will just pass through an extraction area or it'll actually exit or go into uh, and that's the thing is there's like different tiers here of when stuff is working or not working and when the air when you start going faster it just wants to go over more of the details than get caught in or breathe out uh, and part of what's important is to make sure all of the air from the coolers is extracted properly and if you're going slower that's going to help Go down in here. Just going in here. Nothing to see. All right, so now we're in here. Um, we are. We were standing right up there. And bear with me, guys. Like I said, there's been so much done on this thing um, that I'm just doing. I don't need it, dude. You want me to leave it there? Yeah, it's fine. We don't run phone cases. I know it's okay. 
So part of like this is I'm just gonna run you through what's in front of me because there's been so much work done uh, in this, this last bout of all the sheet metal back here. This has been the most ambitious sheet metal project uh, I've ever done for sure. Um, it has been the longest runs of sheet metal, meaning um, it's been, you know, these are, these are eight or nine feet. So I've had to order five by 10 sheets of aluminum uh, just to not have to section these things and splice them together. Um, but it's just this, this last bout, like I've, we got so close with this thing and then it kind of turned into this, you know, it's the classic thing of just having to finish that last 20%. Um, and, and a lot of it revolved around me and my workflow and, and it wasn't stuff I could have the guys do. It was very labor intensive. Um, you know, this is all very specific to my skill set uh, and, you know, my capabilities. And, and it really, if I had to have one of the guys do this stuff, it would either be next to impossible or it would be very time consuming and just giving them design direction. And essentially, I'd still be working on it while they're working on it because I'd have to think about so much forward momentum and steps that they'd have to take just to construct this. Uh, this whole piece is like a shell. And then it gives you a better understanding of the scale, but that's, that's what I'm getting at too, you guys, is like, we didn't want to close this off, right? Because you can see the coolers in here. Um, this is a big CBR cooler. So there's, there's about eight or 10 inches of oil cooler, and then it's all radiator on the top. Um, we also have trans cooler that's nestled back there. I'll kind of show you from the cabin. Uh, but really, you know, we wanted to be able to extract this air out. And then this whole thing is like a big shell. Um, and it, that's the thing is it's modular. So there's a top piece. There's this side rib piece in here. And then these pieces all come off. This is all like welded and blended. There's a, there's a seam here. There's a seam here. So all that stuff has been finished out. Um, and so you you'd essentially, you take that whole side piece off uh, and then there's two verticals. The verticals come out, these centers come out, this top comes out. Um, so it's like one big modular piece. And I think that works for servicing. Uh, another question just to address it right now is, man, that would be a shame if this guy rolls. Oh my gosh, what happens if he rolls? Uh, and that's totally valid and I totally agree. And I absolutely don't wanna have to build this ever again for this car out of, out of a crash. Um, if we build this for another client or something similar, totally, but Kevin's gonna have this whole entire car uh, built out of carbon fiber. Uh, this will all be reproduced in carbon fiber. Every aluminum panel on this car will be carbon fiber. As cool as this looks, you know, I think Kevin stated it the best, like why he loves this is because it's, it's perfectly imperfect. And what that means, I think I got that right, it sounds right, is that when you look at it, it's, it's really good, but you can tell it's hand-built. And it's not in a way that's bad or shifty or like not good craftsmanship, but there's a, a feeling here that someone 100% built this with their hands, and you can't replicate that in carbon fiber. Um, carbon fiber is shiny and monkey-like shiny cool but it's not this where this is like, you know, like an aircraft that someone just put a lot of labor into. Um, and, and that's, this is a huge accomplishment um, for myself and it's a win for myself. And it, like I said, without getting into detail right now that I've, I don't want to, uh, it, I had to really dig deep to get this thing done. And it, it was, it's one of those things where you don't like, where do you start? Where do you start building something like this? And and you know, having a reference picture like I showed you on my phone, that's a huge start to this and having design direction, something you can fall back on. And then also having Ben Walker and having someone, does this look right? Are we on the right shapes here? Are we doing this right? And uh, I've had a good support team like that, but really digging to finish this and getting uh, this accomplished, uh, it feels huge to me. Uh, and it's, it's a very um, bold move and I believe in this. So I'm gonna keep covering in here. So let's, all right, I'm sitting in the back here. Uh, you can see now what I'm talking about as far as functionality. Um, this is all of our venting. The other stuff is not closing out the areas by the B pillar. Uh, all this area through here, 
you know, like our, our B pillar posts and near the shock mounts here, that's all open flow. And that's, that's air that's welcome. That air is coming straight through the windshield area, uh, through the A pillar, and it's coming all the way, all the way through here. So it's, we have enough flow coming through this thing that we don't need to block off and shroud air to get to these coolers. These coolers are gonna get everything they need and then some. So what we can do here is we can start to move to the front of this car. Um, you can see there's just a lot of directed airflow. Any way you wanna cut it. Um, you can see that there's also um, diffusers on the, on the hood up there uh, that fall uh, right into the roof. And then we lead back. Uh, something we haven't talked about is the actual, there is a wing that needs to be added to the back of this thing, but I think I'll save that till next time. And what we'll do is we'll just transfer it to the front. void in here so this is going to be obviously you can see like the there's some radial tube in here uh, and there's two stacks so there'll be two 40s uh, they stick out pretty far i want to say they almost stick out to the bumper and you'll have two 40s stacked in here and then you'll have the fuel cell that goes right up to this tube and it comes across and it drops down and, and it registers and there'll be dual dry brakes one on each side so this whole void in here pretty much gets filled up. Um, you can see that there's uh, traction pads that go in here, they slide in, and there's also a jack right here that comes out. All right, frame of reference for where you're at here. Um, you have your underdrive output right here. Um, you have your ducting, all your aero work for under the floorboards, goes through the front. Follow me, there we go. Uh, and then you can see your big trans cooler under here. So that's probably larger than most people's radiator. Uh, then you can see our radiator and oil cooler back here. Um, there's quite an extensive amount of tin work. Also, you can see just this back panel uh, provisions for rock lights in here. Um, and then there's, there's all this panel work. And that's what I really want to show you guys is uh, I want to get all of the panel work on this car completely tinned together it's all done now uh, but i i want to take the body off and then give you guys a full run through of of everything with the tin on it um, but this is kind of our guts under here this is all going to be fully enclosed um, there's extraction venting in here for the cooler um, there's more extraction here for the trans cooler um, and there's kind of like a teardrop that happens if you go up in between these two you can see that's the mounts for the agm jacks up there um, that's in the cockpit and uh, you know right after the seats the the height of the seats it tear this panel tear drops down and this is a partition so that's keeping all the hot air off the trans coolers away from the radiator and it's directing the cool air uh, all the way down into the lower cavity the oil cooler portion of the radiator uh, and that's what you get away with here is even though this is kind of a slim channel for air to duct through uh, you're really just feeding the oil cooler which the oil cooler really doesn't need much it's 10 inches by 38 inches or 40 inches. So you could put that oil cooler in a, a shitty cardboard box taped up in the back of this thing somewhere and it would still function just as good. So uh, there's just a lot of detail here and you know, maybe you just enjoy just looking through here. But it's infinite, like the work that's in here is just, it goes and goes and goes. <laughs>
from up there, you kind of see this thing, it already felt kind of a shorter truck. Now this is 124, 125 inch wheelbase. Very typical of a trophy truck. Uh, this is the Everson chassis. It's not anything reinvented. It is just his very, it's a very lightweight chassis. Um, and that's what we talked about before is a lot of the tubing selection in here and the placement of the tubing and the amount of tubing in this. It's, it is a lightweight car. I will guarantee it's lighter than many other spec trucks. But really when you start putting this addition back here, it feels so compact. Um, it just, it, it feels right. Uh, and with that, we always had the intention, and I think we talked about it before, uh, we wanted to run, instead of running a big floppy dick parachute one piece, we wanted to have uh, segregation. We wanted to drop down and have a channel, um, a, just a like a restricted channel of air. Something, you know, this is about directing air. It's about cutting air and directing air and where it goes. And that's the thing is when there's upsets in your, in your parallel surfaces, the air will want to channel some of that and that'll help stability all the way through. Um, it's the same with these fins. These fins are going to live here. Um, same with the roof fins. That all will live here. And this is all about creating stability and handling stability uh, and not just letting these things be so slippery. And slippery not in a good way of aero, but slippery in a way of, of sloppy slippery. So something we wanted to, to stress, like I talked about to you, is being able to have individual fenders um, and we didn't want to modify the fenders to the point where we're we're like having to mold and add because no matter what at the end of the day this is a mason motorsports body we want to be able to just take this have a template like if you want to cut something out of it that's the easy part but if you have to start modifying this stuff in a way where you're you're adding things molding stuff then you're not able to replace this as easily and this is essentially a consumable piece these fenders now their fenders not a hood they're consumable so we want to be able to like where we made this cut is exactly where the body line dipped down so literally if you wanted to take this and, and do another one you have a template for all this big cut out you have a template for the pass through on the corners here which i saved and made templates of so literally you just take that and you put it right to that, you trace it with a, with a marker and you cut that out. You cut that one out. This, you simply just pull from your body line over and you pull from the radius over and you have the layout for this. And this is just something that's gonna be riveted on and you can easily make new ones of these, which will be in carbon, um, you know, or you can transfer these. But you know, with how these things go, a lot of times these will just fly off. Another part of having these separate is that when you start to get that, floppy dick on one side because something's broke or whatever you're not battling that if this thing needs to leave it leaves it doesn't take the middle with it it doesn't take the side with it it just leaves one uh, but you know there's there's so much airflow going on everywhere that this is just a this is just kind of a an accessory to what's already going on and the real thing is if this body's not on here um, this thing will shred like no pun intended but it'll it'll still be perfect arrow without needing these panels on it. And ideally, if they didn't have the panels, they'd actually be faster. So this was gonna be, all this cut out here, was going to be some kind of extraction, but we realized that just leaving it open favors it even more. Now you have this. Now that's the thing is the next time we update, we'll have all of our headers on. A lot of this is like the, the process we're in right now is completely stripping everything. Um, getting all of the panels off, all the parts off because there's so many areas that are just miscellaneous that need to be welded and gone through that we just got to take everything off to kind of get to that. A lot of the sheet metal is done. Uh, the stuff that was like, you know, when we looked at all the enclosure panels on the front, 
Um, there was a lot of that that needed like fluff and buff, needed dimples put in it, like flared areas for the Zeus buttons, things like that. So this is the time of just buttoning everything up um, and making sure everything's legit to go home uh, or go to carbon or, or whatever, just so our part is done. There's a ton of stuff if you like look up there. All that is takeoff panels and parts, um, and all that belongs on the car or is just an empty box and it already is on the car. Um, so we have a complete spec trophy truck here. Um, I just don't know like how much we should cover right now because I have to put so much of the car together. And at this point, like I don't know if that's efficient because we have to tear everything down and then we have to weld and we have to put it together. So I think what we need to do is we'll kind of talk a couple more things and then the next update is we'll have this car fully skinned for you guys. We'll make sure Joey comes up and he films it and we'll be able to see a complete look as like a truggy form or just full aluminum everything because under here is all complete aluminum, all bead rolled, stepped, badass. All the exhaust is in line with all the bead rolls and then all under the bedside, same thing. This whole entire chassis is completely closed in aluminum and it's all done properly with bead roll execution and proper extraction every single spot. So it's not like there's just flat panels and they're full, you know, there's no shit done to them. Like every single thing is addressed on this whole car. Um, I think we can talk a little bit about the lighting package, even though stuff isn't on there. I just, like I said, you guys are gonna have to wait until we get this thing assembled. We'll do two more hits. We'll do the, the dress rehearsal with all the aluminum skins. We might be able to put the body on at that point too. And then we'll do outside um, final farewell and we'll do full walk around of this thing on its own weight, sitting with its tires and wheels on outside. This is your light rock. And this thing is running 12 XL80s, all radiused. Um, we got to trim some of the fiberglass so we can't put it on right now, but there's a really nice capture device here. This is a billet swivel. Uh, this is from Armada Engineering. And what that does is it locks in. There's a male portion over here that goes into the female and you, you set it in a fold down position and then you lock it in. And then once it's up and it's in its rotational area, it is, is locked in there to the point where it can't get out. Um, there's also Heim linkage here. And this Heim linkage is what runs our actuator. So this upper light bar is on an actuator, linear actuator to adjust up and down. All of our lights here, um, there's one, so one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight XL80s. All these guys are fixed. And then this bar, this bar has one big 40 inch and then one, two, three, four, four XL80s. And all of that is on an actuator with a bell crank. Again, once we final this thing out, we can show you and even put power to it. I put it on my Instagram a while ago, but once we get a final dress rehearsal on this thing, we'll be able to plug some of this. Uh, again, this is our, our last crunch on this thing. So we're kind of mid board on doing everything. Um, all of the tin work up here, these are just light covers. This stuff lives on the truck. It was built to live here. So there's just a, a larger hole in the fiberglass to get this out and you pop these guys and then all this comes off at night. So these are just protective covers. They'll be mesh in here. Uh, and really that's just to keep those things from getting damaged during the day. Uh, and then you pop that stuff out in the pit at night. the door skins uh, it's a lot easier to see what's going on inside and just we have to kind of still run the door skins right now for what we're building um, you can see that there's entry steps in here um, a lot of times like the the other way you could do the entry steps is you could have this tube be flush with the body but just for the purpose of um, you know Kevin's co-dog and just making things easy I had these things stick out a little bit and then I added just kind of a teardrop shape here to make everything flow right but I mean it's a really it's a good step to get in and it makes sense like you don't have to guess you can kind of just feel the side of the body and drop down on this thing instead of you know guess where that hole is 
Um, these are all structural. I don't know if you can see in here, but there's some support there. That also protects the exhaust. Uh, the exhaust isn't on right now, but if you just just imagine the Bluetooth setup here, um, your collectors are here, tri y and then they kind of hook, and they go up with the chassis tube, and then they are dumping out. So um, once the skin's on, you'll be able to definitely see like the functionality of that area. Some of the miscellaneous stuff we added in here, uh, I know we had the GPS mounts done, um, we did add window nets, so there's like some, some window nets that double as chassis gussets. See if I can get any light over there. So you can see that's all boxed, and that registers, and then that's your classic latch style net. Um, no spring-loaded stuff. Um, this is kind of the favorable item. The spring-loaded stuff can detach uh, if, if you have a hard hit or pop itself out. You can see another corner gusset for the lower. Um, there's some keypad hookups. This is an auxiliary keypad for Kevin. Um, this is living on the chassis. Um, there's also a, like, I think this is an RPM light up here. Um, I don't know if you'd call that a shift light, but just, a, just some kind of a light indicator. And I feel really dumb for not knowing exactly what that's called, yeah, but it is what it is. Something we had to revise. Um, the foot pedal the the brake pedal um, the pad was not wide enough so what we did is we we cut that off um, and redid the pad and we made it favor a little more to the left side uh, and then you can see there's a matching dead pedal here the dead pedal itself um, the, for your left foot that also acts as a heel stop so you can drive two different ways um, you know you can drive very aggressively with your toe on the brake uh, and really put pressure into that or you can lock your heel down into there and kind of just um, tow it like that and pivot your heel. Uh, and then obviously when you need to really brace, um, you know, or stabilize yourself, then that whole left pad here is integrated into the car to be able to support yourself and kind of um, get yourself more sturdy. And, and that's really good for safety as far as like, if you know there's gonna be heavy impact or something, um, it gives you a lot more stability and getting yourself situated in the seat. Something else to see is the impact mount. Um, this is a variable impact mount. So the, the holster uh, for the Milwaukee is definitely part of the chassis. And then the lower portion down there, this gives Kevin a couple of options because it's bolt-on. So that gives Kevin options as far as what he wants to run for an extension. Um, he can make a new bracket and bring that thing closer to the impact, um, you know, or just adjust like, if it's a different socket too. That's that spring-loaded socket. Like, I don't know what you call that. I'm, I'm not a race guy. Um, but you can run a regular socket too if you just make a new register down there. We are on the subject of the dead pedal for the passenger side. Now, as simple as you might think one of these things is, uh, I truly, I, damn, zoom out. Um, I truly think that these are important because, you know, you're sitting, especially the co-driver, you're sitting in these cars for a long duration of time. You do need to make different adjustments with your feet uh, just to remain comfortable instead of being stuck in one position. Um, so that's why, like, I, I set this thing up where you have, and I'm not sitting in a seat, so it's kind of hard to get, like, the, hold on, to get the angle explained. Um, but what you have here is you have, you can have your foot planted here. Um, you can have your toes at this point. You can have another crunch point like that, or you can have a full kill heel situation on this thing. So you're really getting one, two, three, four levels of adjustment uh, on something like that. And, and that's super crucial for especially the co-dog in a situation like this, because you're, like I said, you're spending a lot of time here and you're not the guy operating foot controls. So um, this stuff, just this whole package in here, there's just a lot going on, you know, like, That's our folding GPS, you know, everything's on a bell crank over here. Locks in place, you know, and that's your pull right there. So when you want to get out, you just pull that thing. Goes all the way down, goes all the way forward, lets your knees come out through here, lets you load and unload, um, especially if danger, if you crash or you know you're, you're gonna have to do a change, you know, a tire change. Then boom, you push that thing in. You're not having to crawl through here. You can get in and out of here quick and then, then right in. 
and then you're back in. Um, and that thing's a lot smoother when you're using two hands and it's a lot smoother when there's a GPS in here that's adding some mass and some kind of rigidity when this is bolted in. Um, but right now we're just in the throw, so you can see kind of packaging again over here, footwell area. Uh, this thing is just raw race car, um, not a lot of enclosure on the inside. Um, the panel work, I think it'll be really nice to see all this stuff when it's back in, but right now um, it's just a lot of just raw, gnarly stuff. And then our upper console is hiding up, up here. So for the water lines, we're using a Wiggins style fitting. Um, these are, I, I mean, a lot of people have probably seen Vibrant fittings, but these are Wiggins. These are the cream of the crop. Uh, they're the best setup you can use uh, for like a sealed clamp. Um, but you can see there's quite a bit of spaghetti here for the water lines. So all that stuff is running from our coolers um, in the rear and then running all through the portion of the like B pillar chassis and then they come out through the corners they collect into the trans tunnel and then they run parallel on the passenger side of the engine bay uh, and then come and pick up into the water pump in the inlet so um, yeah those are going to be something cool to see on here too uh, you know I wish we had more of an update uh, or more updates on this thing uh, and something where we can dive into more detail but it, like I said it's just one of those projects that just started going on and between Joey and I just we just didn't get up to filming as much as we could have. Now, again, I'm holding a camera right now uh, and I could have definitely covered this stuff and taken the time to do it. So I take ownership of that as well. Uh, but the this is the Spectra has been a huge learning experience um, and it's not so much about making mistakes. It's about really putting thought into everything that goes into one of these cars. Uh, really putting thought into why it needs to be where it needs to be what the priority level is how to get to it how often do you need to get to it like thinking about stuff at the highest level of performance and functionality for racing um, and this is stuff this is valuable information that then we can take and we can put this into every possible build we do talking to Joey just for a minute and I sat in there and I started to get bogged down huge um, and when I mean bogged down I start to get so um, trapped in my own obsessive thinking of, of and it's like fear-based thinking uh, it goes oh my gosh we have a little under a week to finish this thing and then I go how are we gonna do this what's you know there's too much and I like start looking at everything and right when your perspective changes like that everything changes and you start like you can't you can't see the other end. You just start to see the overwhelming parts. Um, and I, I almost feel like that right now. <sighs> we are so close with this, but it just, it, it, there's so many just little details that like we need to finish. And, and I have to just trust the process uh, as far as you know, like Colin and I and getting stuff done. And just sometimes what's worked for me, and I'm, I'm talking myself out of this right now, but what's worked for me is I just focus on one thing at a time. Um, it's just the same as, you know, if you have to live your life one day at a time or one hour at a time and I will just, you know, we can make a list of what we need to do and we literally just start to do that, do the next one, do the next one, do the next one. And then by the time you know it, you've already conquered the thing. Um, and I think that's part of just, just putting your head down and shutting up and focusing. Uh, and this truck has been a lot of that of just, trusting the process but also like towards the end it has really been something of dedicating time and focus to it to the point where 
I cannot be on the phone. I can't be communicating as much as I should be with people. I have to just literally grind into this thing to get stuff done. Uh, and that's what we've done. And, you know, as far as Colin goes, um, you guys know Colin. Colin is my lead fabricator. And um, he's one of the best examples of a young kid I have ever seen in my life. Uh, and he he's one of those people to me that he's so special that I... I support him no matter what, and, and if his aspirations and his dreams are to go to the highest level of self, it might not be here, and no matter what, I support him because I love and I care about him so much, and I am so grateful for the time that, Colin, you've given us. Um, you're an amazing human. Uh, I'm so grateful for your parents and your mom and dad and um, and the person that they raised, and, and without, what I'm getting at is without Colin on this um, we wouldn't have this thing done like this. Uh, Collins had such a huge impact uh, working with me and, and helping the shop and helping get stuff done. And it's just, it's been an incredible journey and I look forward to years more, but at the same time, there's, there's part of me that I just wanna support a person like that no matter what, whatever that looks like. Um, and I can live currently every day and just be grateful for, every single bit that that I've gotten from, from Colin or from you, Colin. So um, this is the 6100 update. Like I said, I just I, we had a, a lapse from the last update to here. There's been so much done. And when you start looking at this, like I, I sat in the cabin right now again, and I just start looking around, and uh, the time and thought process we've put into every single part in this car, like there's no generic tabs. There's like everything has style and design and function put into it every single place. And, and it's really beautiful to see it come together because you can put all the panels on it and it's like this big, beautiful, stunning. It, it looks, you know, Kevin said it, it looks threatening. Uh, all together, it looks like a threatening opponent. And I love that shit. And on top of that, then you start to take stuff off and you look at the details and every single little corner and inch of this thing is meticulously thought after and worked. Uh, and it's a beautiful thing. So I think I am in a point here where this is overwhelming. Um, and I'm just, I have to trust the process and, and stick through this. This is uh, the last bit of this thing. And, um, you know, it's interesting because I do document like Joey and I have been doing this for, I don't know if it's been two years or close, but uh, part of this, I am, I am, my soul and my heart is attached to this shit. So if people want to say, oh, it's just a truck, man. Oh, it's just a project, dude. It's just a truck. Cool, dude. I don't operate like that. This shit is attached to me. I'm attached to this. This is part of my life and my story. And also I dedicate my time to this. I have my kids, I have my wife. This is what I spend most of my life doing is I sit in the studio or stand and we work on these things. So they're a big part of my life and my story. Uh, and, and documenting them is a big deal. So when I talk about all this stuff and the journey, that's exactly what it is. It's a journey for me. Uh, and I hope you guys get stuff from this and I hope you have a good Monday.